Hi, and welcome to Code Tutorials. Today we'll take a look at how you can display testimonials on your site using the Testimonials widget from our key add-ons for Elementor plugin. At the moment, we're on the page where you can see some examples of this widget's use. It provides a showcase of several different customization and layout options as a way to show you all the possibilities you have for making your testimonials. You can make your testimonials as a colorful checkerboard or align them in a single row. Also, you can choose whether to use images or titles for the people you're quoting or not. And that's saying nothing of the available stylization options for the text and layout. So, without further ado, let's see how this widget works and what you need to know to customize it. Head over to the back end and in the Elementor sidebar search for testimonials. The one we want is the plain testimonials widget with a red icon, so this one. Drag it over to the right. Here we have it. This is what the widget looks like by default. We have three items for three testimonials with this layout that you see. And the first thing we can change is the number of columns. The default is three, but you can pick anything from one to eight. I'll use two. Below that, we have the columns responsive option. Our default is predefined, but if you'd like to manually adjust these settings, you can pick custom. And that's what I'll use as I want to be able to set the number of columns that will be shown on each screen size. Now, we don't have an option for the largest screens, meaning desktops, as that's the default screen size, so it requires no particular responsiveness settings. So, the first option here is for a range of screen widths that encompass different laptops. And you'd use this drop down to pick the number of columns you want to show. I'm going to stick with two. And I'll set the same number for the next one. Think of it as max screen size. But I'll set one for all the others after this. There we go. Now I'm going to skip ahead to the layout set of settings where I'll adjust the item layout, which in a way is the look of my testimonials. Right now it's set to boxed. We can switch that to info below and get this look. Then we have side quote, which looks like this. And finally, we have the side with image option, which gets us this. This is the layout I'll be using. The next option we have under layout is the side width. It lets us adjust the space to the left of the text content. You can see how it shifts when I drag the slider. Since the image is located in this space, by changing the side width, you can force the image to grow or shrink to fit the space you set. Okay, I'll erase this now to keep the default value of the side width. And below this we have the image border radius. This option lets us soften the corners of the image. If you keep increasing the values, you can turn it from a square into a circle. For myself, I'll set 20 as the radius. Okay, that's that for the layout settings, so let's get back to the section with the general settings. We left off at the space between items option. As its name suggests, this option lets us adjust the space separating the items. When I move the slider, you can see how the items draw apart as the space increases. So you can use the slider or type in a value. I'll do the latter and set 68 pixels for the space between items. Now we come to the testimonial items. By default, we have three of them, and you can add more by clicking on the Add Item button here. OK. We need to save the change for the new item to become visible and then refresh our page. And there it is. I now have four testimonials. Let me reopen the options. OK. Since I added the number of testimonials I want to use, I can proceed to customize their placeholder content. The title field contains the testimonial's title. And that's this text here. You can replace it or you can delete it to omit the title entirely. You can see how the layout adjusts automatically. I'm going to leave out the title for my testimonials so we can move on to the text field. This is where you'd add the testimonial itself, the quote. I'll just put the one I want to use. Give me a sec to type it all in. There. Once that's done, we have the author field. This is where you'd put the name of the person you're quoting, like so. And you have the author occupation field if you want to share that person's job title or position, which I do. All right. Following this, we have the author image. As the name suggests, this is where we'd add the image of the person who gave the testimonial. I'll use this one. Insert media. There it is now. Okay. 
After this, we have the quilt color option. This is the color of the little quotation mark icon next to the image. So, if you want to change it, you have this nifty color picker to help you do that. I'll reset this to keep mine white. Then we have the title color. It also comes with a standard color picker, but as I removed my title, there is no need for me to do any color changes. But after this, we have the text color, which will help you change the testimonial text. And there's also author color for changing the color of the author's name. Finally, we have the author occupation color to change the color of the author's job title. Now, all these color changes can be made for individual testimonial items, so that each would have a different color scheme. But you can also change their colors at the same time, and I'll be showing you how to do that a bit later. For now, let's carry on. Our next option is called background type. Let me open the classic just to show you briefly. This option lets us add either an image for the background, or we can pick a single color. However, this option only works with the box testimonial item layout. You can see an example of that layout on the widgets page. Just a sec. It's this one. The testimonials here have single color block backgrounds, and each is set to be different. Alright. Now, I'd like to fill in the rest of my content for the other testimonials. And since that's going to take some time, I'll skip ahead with the video. Here we are. All the testimonials content has been customized and I'll just hit update to save my work so far. Ok. And now we can head over to the style tab to see what options we have in there. Alright, the first set of settings is for the quote style. And within them we have the option to choose our quote icon. And you have two choices here. You can click on this field to open the icon library and choose one of the icons from the collection. Or you can click here to upload an SVG. I already have the SVG I want to use in my media library, so I'll just select it now and insert media. And this is what my new icon looks like. You'll notice it's been changed for all four testimonials. And if we go to change the quote color, then that too will affect the color of all four quotation icons. So if you want a uniform color for your testimonial quotation icons, then you'd use this option. And if you want them to differ, you'd use the individual testimonial item settings to make that happen. Following this, we have the quote size option. You can use the slider to adjust the size or you can type in a value. I'll set 10 pixels here. And don't worry, I'll be making other adjustments as well, so this will end up looking way better than it does right now. Namely, to the quote box size option. It will help me adjust the size of the quote icon holder. You can see how it expands when I move the slider. I want to set 36 pixels as the value, so let me just reduce it here. There we are. Now, I skipped the quote position option. We have only two available fields, right and bottom. We can use them, let me show you, to shift the quote icon and its holder across the author image. If I keep increasing the value, the icon will climb to the top left corner of the image. However, you can also use negative values. In that case, if I set minus 15 pixels, the quote icon will step outside of the bounds of the image and only cover a corner of it. Next, we have the quote background color to change the color of the little circle behind the quote icon, its holder. And you can see that its color is changed in all the testimonial items at the same time. And the following option applies to that same background circle or holder. Its default shape is actually a square, and it has some default radius values that have turned it into a circle. So now, if I start to change the values here, they'll start from one pixel and will get the squarish shape back. And if I keep increasing the values, the holder shape will become more and more circular. Of course, you can always leave this blank to retain the default values and to keep the holder as a circle. Ok. Now, in the style set of settings, we have the title tag option. It lets you pick any of these tags for your testimonial title. If you recall, I erased my title, so this option won't do anything for me. So, moving on, we have the title color. Again, without a title, this won't do me much good. And under title typography, we have all kinds of handy typography settings, such as font family and size, its weight and style, and so on. The next few options after this are for the text style settings. 
These are the same as the title style settings, only these apply to the testimonial text. So we have the text tag, where we can change the tag for the text here. I'll switch from H3 to the P tag. Then the text color option works to change the color of all the testimonial texts at the same time. Following that, we have the text typography settings. In here, we can pick the font family for our text. You can scroll through this list or search for the font if you know its name. And we can change the font size either using the slider or by setting a number value. That's what I'll do. 19 pixels? OK. Then, with the weight option, we have a range of values we can choose from. After that, we have the text transform option, which we can use to make our text uppercase, for example. We also have the style option, if that's something you're interested in. Following that, the text decoration option, which lets you add an underline or a line through, stuff like that. Then with line height, we can adjust the height of the line with our text. It's in amps by default, but you can switch it to pixels. I'll put 28 pixels for mine. Finally, we have the letter spacing option to get more space between letters. And that's it for the typography settings. Our next option is to set the author tag. Just like with the title and the text, you have a range of tags to choose from. And we have the author color. You can use the slider to set your color or type in a hex code. Then we have the author typography settings. These contain all the same options we just covered with the text typography. Since the options are identical, I don't think there's any need for another run through. So carrying on, we have the author occupation color. Again, we have this, by now familiar, color picker. And this time, I'll use it to set a hex code for my chosen color. There, a nice light gray. And accompanying that, we have another set of typography settings. These are for the author's occupation or job title. And I won't go into explaining them as they should be familiar by now. Instead, I'll just set my font size to be 16 pixels. And I'll change the weight to 500. So this wraps up the style set of settings. So we can now take a look at the one after that, spacing style. In here we have the title margin bottom option. Since I don't have a title, I can't show you, but this option would let you add more space under your title if you need it. We also have the item text margin bottom. It works similarly to the option above, in that it serves to let us add more space under the testimonial text, like so. For my item text, I'll set a bottom margin of 27 pixels. Below this, we have the item text padding. This option lets us create more space around the testimonial text. You can pick if the value you set will be in pixels, percentages, or ms. I'll use percentages and click here to reset the values and delink the fields. And I'll only use this field to add some padding to the right side of my testimonial texts. There. OK. Next, we have the item side margin right. If you recall from the very start of this video, we had a side width option that let us set the width of the space occupied by the image and the icon. So, in a way, you could look at this testimonial item layout as having two sides. The one with the visual content on the left and the one with the textual content on the right. With the item side margin right option, we can add more space to the right of the visual content. Arguably, this would serve as a way to separate the two sides. I'll set 37 pixels for my item side right margin. After this, we have the item author occupation margin top. So this one lets us separate the author's name and their title by adding more space for the author occupation margin top. And that's this space here. I'm going to set 4 pixels for mine. And that's it, we've reached the end. The last options tab, Advanced, has several useful settings for responsiveness, positioning, entrance animations and more, but since it's available for all Elementor widgets and not unique to our testimonials widget, we won't be covering it in this tutorial. Now I'll just save this. And I want to show you one more thing. In the Content tab we have a section called Developer Tools. When we open them there's just one option here. If we switch its setting to Yes, it will display the widget in the form of a standard WordPress shortcode, the text you see on the right, which we can easily copy for use elsewhere on our site. OK. To finish up, we can take one last look at the widgets page. Having gone over the options in the back end, you should now know how to make a testimonial element of your own. Here is the example I copied for this tutorial. 
Beyond that, the widgets page has other examples whose design you can mirror or use as inspiration. Of course, you're also free to create something entirely unique. How you decide to use and stylize this widget is entirely up to you. Simply decide which of the possibilities offered by the testimonials widget work best with the style and design of your site. Finally, I hope going through this together has helped you to see how easy making testimonial elements can be with the key add-ons for Elemental plugin and its testimonials widget. If you have any questions, comments or suggestions, please drop us a line in the comments below. Also, make sure to subscribe to our channel and be the first to learn about new theme guides and tutorials. Thanks for watching.